everybody. All right, so we worked yesterday in uh, the first part of lesson five, talking about indents and how to use indents to make the paragraphs move to different places on the page. Uh, today we're going to be talking more about tabs, which is a slightly different thing, but also very useful for making words appear at certain points of the page. Okay, a tab is basically something that you put on the ruler. Um, remember the ruler is right here. The rule is right here. Um, you can put tabs on the page that will allow you, if you press tab, like the tab key on your keyboard, take a look right next to the Q. Oh, this mask is killing me. I gotta switch back. <laughs> there we go. Much better. Now I can actually talk and breathe and find fun stuff like that. Okay. Um, if you put a tab on your ruler, you will be able to, if you press the tab key, which is right next to the Q on your keyboard, you press that, and now your words will jump to that point, and you can start at that particular area, okay? So a tab is very useful if you've got a particular need for things to be lined up a certain way or something like that. It's all very good and helpful, keeping things straight uh, in the document, okay? Now, um, if you are watching this video later, um, you need to go ahead and get your textbook out. Uh, you need to get to page uh, 121. So pause the video right now and go to page 121 in your book. All right, you've, uh, you've gotten there. Yay. All right, now. So it says to create a new document in Word. Pause the video right now and get yourself a new Word document, nice and blank. Nice blank Word document. Clean sheet, ready to go. Come on, computer. Oh, the computer is all kinds of slow today. Okay, hopefully you've got enough desktop to be able to see uh, both your Word document and your computer screen at the same time. Very, very helpful. Okay, so <clears throat> first thing it says is display non-printing characters. That means you want these little P-type characters to be seen. Also, when you press tab uh, on this document, when you press tab, you will see a little arrow as well if you have the printing characters. So this is important to make sure that you've got everything straight. Uh, so go ahead and click on this backwards looking P with the uh, filled in top part. If you don't already have that clicked, you might already have it clicked. It might already possibly be there. Um, so go ahead and click on it and if you need to. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, you will see things like this whenever you have the printing character, non-printing characters marked up. All right, now go to your ruler. If you don't have a ruler, if you need to set up your ruler, that's a quick fix. You go to view, your tab right here at view, and you go into the show area and you click on ruler and make sure it's got a check mark. That will give you this ruler right here. Now, on the ruler, the horizontal ruler, which means that it's the one that goes side to side. Go to the one inch mark where it says one. Now, this is a very important distinction. Everybody pay attention to me right now. If you can, look up at the board. This ruler is about this thin. <laughs> and it's kind of hard, and you may not think that there's a top and a bottom to it, but there is. Okay? You want to be on the bottom side of the ruler when you click because the top side doesn't really work. If you, like, click in the top area, nothing happens. But if you click on the bottom area... If you look really closely, you can see that a little L has been put on the ruler, and it's now following my mouse around because I haven't let go of the key yet. So go to the one inch mark on the bottom side of the one, click once, and you will get an L on that spot. This is called a left tab. If you take your mouse and you, after you've let go and put it down there, if you take your mouse and come back around and put it over the little L, you will see it's called a left tab. Okay? 
tab, you will notice, is also the word that's on your keyboard. Okay, when you press tab, normally it only goes a half inch. Normally it only goes about this far to be a half inch. Okay, but you have now set one at the one inch mark. Therefore, it skips over the half inch mark and goes directly to the one inch mark because you told it, I want my tab to start here. Okay, now. Once you've set it at the one inch mark, now you press the tab key and it jumps straight to that point. It skips over the half that it would normally do and goes directly to the, to the one inch mark. Now go ahead and press tab again. If you want to, you can notice that it only goes a half inch this time instead of the full inch that it did the first time you pressed it. Now it does its normal half inch and every time you press it again, it's going to go just a half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch. Okay. Every time you press the tab key, it only goes a half inch unless you put down one of these tab stops and then it jumps directly to it. Now, what if I had put this tab stop at the three inch mark? Well, then it would jump all the way to the three inch mark. And that's where you would start being able to write your words. Okay. But because you put it at the one inch mark, it jumps directly to one inch. And that is the place where the words start. Normally it's a half inch, but you put down a tab stop. Therefore, it jumps to the tab instead of the word, like instead of the half inch. All right. Now let's, uh, we tabbed over one time. The insertion point now goes to the one inch spot. Go ahead and type in your first name. Mine is Scott. Don't type in Scott. That's my name, not yours. Yes. First name. So far. So type in your first name. Now, click the tab selector box once to change the tab type to a center tab. Now, the tab selector is this little white box right here, um, just above the vertical uh, ruler. Okay. You see it's got a little L in there right now. Click it one time. One time. Killing me softly. All right. You now have a little upside down T. And the upside down T basically says, I am going to act like you did centering. Okay. Now, this one will go at the four inch mark. So underneath the four, but still in the white area of the ruler, click once. And you will have a little upside down T underneath the four. Now, when you press tab, it jumps to the four inch mark. And now you type in Microsoft Word 2016. But notice, it doesn't start going towards the right. It actually starts going both directions because now it's acting like a center. Like when you do alignment center and all the words go to the middle and they start equally spreading right and left. Okay, if you put in a center tab stop like this one, it does the same thing as center alignment, but only if you press the tab key to get to it. Do you understand how that works? Watch how it works, go ahead, type it in. Microsoft, notice the words Go both right and left as you type. Word 2016. Microsoft Word 2016. Did you notice how the words go, they go both ways? Like some of it is before the four inch mark and some of it is after the four inch mark? That's because that center tab works just like a center alignment and it does the same thing. So you can click this thing. If you get the upside down, you click one time. You look. Now click whatever you want to do. Now you guys are going to pull one more. Grab it out with that. Uh, you can do that. 
That's fine. All right, now, now what's happening? Now I'm typing my thought about the board watch and go set. Oh, um, right click on you. Say class the word. Okay, uh, straighten out everything for everybody in the classroom. Now I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, hopefully I can edit this video and take that part out. <laughs> we'll streamline this a little bit. All right, so if you're still following along, now you notice that the text is centered. Because you press tab. Now, remember, this only works if you press tab. If you did not press tab, if you just typed in Scott and then space and then Microsoft Word, it, it doesn't care. If you typed in a bunch of stuff, None of it is going to be centered 
because you never press tab to get to that centering tab. Only when you press the tab do you go align with the center tab and get the centering done. Okay? All right, now, you got to press enter to get a new line. Now, notice what happens. Everybody, I want you to pay attention right now. Notice what happens. When I pressed enter, I still have my left tab. I still have my center tab. If I tab now, it will go to that point. Okay? All of the settings carry forward to the new line. It stays until you change it. Okay? All right, now the next box in the document. Click the tab selector box once again to change the tab to a right tab. So go back to that upside down little T center tab right there. Click it one time. Now, be careful. Um, some, some of these uh, computers and some of these Windows programs are a little bit slow. And occasionally when you click it, I just clicked it. Notice what's still up there, the backwards looking T or the upside down T. Okay, it sh I clicked it. It should be... It should be a right-handed, you know, it should be a right-handed tab. I clicked it. It, it, it should have changed, but it didn't, okay? Sometimes you either have to, like, go all the way through and do it again by clicking all the way through the cycle or just trust it and go ahead and put down one. I'm going to trust it and see what happens. So the next step, step two, says click at the three-inch mark. Oh, nope, I guess mine uh, is still set for center tabs. Okay, now I clicked it, and now it's a left hand, a right-handed tab. I click at the three. Now there's a little right-handed tab there. A right-handed tab works just like a right alignment. Um, the words will appear at the spot and start like filling in to the left. Okay. Now I press the tab once. Okay, and I am now at the one-inch mark because I still have that tab there. Now press it again. And now I'm at the right-handed tab spot at the three-inch mark. Now I'm going to type in my last name. And uh, Brandon, it doesn't matter what you type in. You can type in anything you want, sweetie. You do it. You do you. Notice that the words start on the right, and they start on the right, and they move to the left. But they start at the three-inch mark. Not like if you did right alignment. If you did right alignment on this line, the words would be over here, okay? If you use this right alignment, the words would be over here, and they would start here and go that way. But you used a right tab, you tabbed over to it, and it starts from here and moves to the right, okay? So people at home, what I just showed everybody is if you did a right-handed alignment like this, it would just start at the right-hand side of the page, okay? And the words would start here and move this way. Okay? That's not what we want. What we want is to start at the three inch mark and start from there moving leftwards. So we can't use a right alignment. That just takes us to the right hand side of the page. So we keep it at a left alignment. We put down a right handed tab. We tab over to it. And then we type in words and it goes from the right to the left. Right to the left but at the point that we want it to, not at the right-hand side of the page, okay? All right, slightly different stuff, still pretty cool. All right, now, tab selector one more time, a new kind of tab. Um, have you guys gone to restaurants and ordered stuff off the menu? No, oh, never? Come on. <laughs> All right, well, when you go, to a fan, you go to a restaurant, you'll see the name of the stuff, like you're looking at your menu, you see the name of the stuff here, and then the price over here on the right-hand side, right? Name of stuff, description, on the other side, price, right? Well, if they do it with the price with the cent, the dollars and cents, this tab right here, which looks like a centering tab, but with an extra dot on it, that means that we're going to line up the numbers Anything that's a whole number will be over here. Once you press the decimal, everything starts typing that way. You see how that works? That way all of your decimals line up. You can actually get all of your decimals lined up on the sheet. So if you've got like a list of prices or a list of scientific um, like numbers or something like that, 
all of the decimals will line up. Therefore, the ones will line up. The tenths will line up. The hundreds will line up. The hundredths will line up. You, know, you got it? Check it out. Let's go. So click one time here to get this one, which looks like an upside down T with an extra little dimple mark on it. Go to the <laughs> five inch mark. Click on the five inch mark. Put a little one there. Tab once to get to the four inch mark. Remember we have a four inch marker at the center tab, four inches. And tab one more time to get to the five inch mark, which has a decimal. This is called a decimal tab. Now type in a price, dollar sign. One, two, three. Notice that the numbers, as you're typing them in, are moving to the left. They're moving to the left until you press the decimal. Press the decimal. Now it's going to stop and start moving to the right. So 75 cents. Okay. Notice the numbers proceed to the left until you press the decimal. Then they proceed to the right. So if I were to do this multiple times, if I were to make a bunch of prices and I would tab over to this decimal tab stop each time, all of the prices line up. All of the decimal points line up with this. You see how that works? Everybody look at my screen. You see how that works? All of the decimal points are lined up. All of the prices are lined up. This would make your math problem very easy to do, right? And all the numbers, all the numbers are lined up good, like they should be in math class. All right. Okay. All right. So that was a decimal tab stop. It lines up the decimals. It makes your numbers easy to line up. Okay. There's one more kind uh, time. One more kind to do a tab selector. Click on it one more time. You're going to get a little bar little vertical bar that looks like an L or an like a lowercase L or an I without its little uh, dot. Click at the six inch mark. Click at the six inch mark underneath the six. Tab over to, uh, actually you don't have to tab over to it. Look, it's already there. Oh, see that little bar that's shown up there? That's what that little bar stop does. You click on it, it automatically creates a little bar right there. You see it? Oh, oh, oh. Now you can do fancy stuff like separating things. Ooh, fancy. Last name, price. Ooh, fancy. Okay. This bar tab stop creates a little bar on your line, every line that you have. Watch. If I keep pressing enter, every time I press enter, that bar stop is active and it puts in a new part of the line connected to the last part of the line. That was in the line above it. Fancy. All right, good times. Scroll on down to page 122. Okay. The paragraph group dialog box launcher, the little corner with the arrow coming out of it right next to the word paragraph on the home tab. Uh, you may click on that. Click on it, you get your pop-up box. Now, line and page breaks. Click on the tab that says line and page breaks. Okay, notice there's other stuff in here. All right, not really useful. But down at the bottom, tabs. Notice the button that says tabs at the bottom. Click on that one. New box. Oh, ho, ho. so in this paragraph, the tabs that are set up for this paragraph are all listed right here. We have a one inch tab, a three inch tab, a four inch tab, a five inch tab, and a six inch tab. And as you click through each one, it tells you what it is. The one inch tab is a left alignment tab. The three inch tab is a right alignment tab. The four inch tab is a center tab. The five is a decimal and the six is a bar. Okay. Uh, notice here, it also says default tab stop. That means that if you uh, don't have a tab stop to go to, how far do you want to go? The standard is a half inch. Every time you press tab, it'll go a half inch unless there's a tab stop to jump to, okay? If there's a tab stop to jump to, it will automatically go to that tab stop. But if there's no more tab stops on the ruler,
then it's just going to go boop, boop, a half inch. All right. Now you can change these from this tab stop area and <laughs> uh, you can, I think, um, yeah, it didn't. Uh, okay. So if you click on the first line of text, it's got like the uh, ones that it has. Uh, the second line of text has all of them. So actually check this out. Go ahead and press cancel. Now, right now you're on the second line with all of the tab stops in the ruler. Click back into your first line though. And notice that the three additional tab stops that you put in are not there because they came afterwards. They came in on the second line. When you press enter, you are creating a different paragraph and it will have the same rules but any new rules, they're not, they're only applied to this paragraph. If you press enter, you're going to have the old rules, but the new rules will not trans, they will not go back and fix the first paragraph. Okay. They won't do it. It's like you, they've got their rules. The new paragraph has its rules. Okay. So uh, now go uh, up into the first one, highlight, highlight this first paragraph right here with your name in Microsoft Word. Go ahead and go for the paragraph top box launcher. Go to tabs. Okay. Now, see down here, you've got set, clear, and clear all. You can actually click on different ones, and you can uh, change something in it and set it, or you could clear that one particular one. Like I just got rid of the four by click. I clicked on four, and then I clicked on clear, and it got rid of the four. And now I can clear. Uh, if I want to, I could clear all of them at the same time. Just boop, all of them gone. So press clear all, say OK. Now all of your tabs have gone away. OK, if you go back to the paragraph box launcher and go back to tabs again, you could actually type in 0.75. You can say left handed tab stop and you can say OK. And it'll actually create the left handed tab stop there for you. That's another way to get all of your tabs in place at the same time. OK. Um, if you don't, uh, go ahead and click into your second line right here. Go ahead and click into your second paragraph. If you don't like where something has gone, you can actually use your mouse, click and hold. You can change the position by clicking and holding on the mount, on the uh, the one that you selected. Okay. Notice that it also gives you a little uh, demonstration of what it's going to look like whenever you let go. Okay. Another thing that you can do is to kill off one of your tabs. Um, for example, let's say I don't like this bar tab anymore. I don't want it anymore. So I go underneath the six, I click on it, I hold it, I drag it down away from the ruler, drag it down away from the ruler and let go. That tab is now gone. It's gone poof. And no longer is that tab part of the operation. Okay, so that's how you get rid of tabs. So the horizontal ruler can be used to adjust a tab to put it in a different position. And it can also be used to remove a tab. Now just be careful, check it out. You have two tabs here to get to the half, uh, to get to the decimal tab. If I remove this tab stop for the center because I don't need it, uh-oh, then this tab goes to the decimal one and this tab goes a half inch. Now those tabs are still there. If you pull one of those tab stops out, the tabs are still there. You have to remove the tab back. You have to remove the tab back to get it to act like a centering tab again. Okay. So be careful with what you do there. Okay. Um, tab leader is something that uh, causes like, you ever seen uh, in a bibliography where it's like, you have like the name of something and then you've got those dots that go across the screen. And then you've got the page number that that chapter starts on. You guys ever seen that in the book? Okay, this is how that works. I'm going to go here to this line, and I'm going to put dots up to this one here. Okay, I go to the paragraph. I go to the tabs. The leaders are right here. Okay, I'm going to select the number one inch tab here. I'm going to select number two leader, which is a bunch of dots. And I'm going to say OK. And now it goes up to the one inch line with dots. See how that is? 
Now, I would have to go in there if I really wanted to do it right. <laughs> I would have to go in there and select the two and a half inch tab and also do leaders for those. And now the thing goes all the way across to my name. Okay. Those are called tab leaders. Okay. Because it leads you across the tab to the information on the other side of the tab. Um, inserting date and times. Guess what? Go ahead and uh, get to the uh, 125.75, press enter. Type in the word SEPT. That's not an actual word, but it's part of the word September. Press enter. Because he gave you that little tool tip, it actually fills in the rest of the word for you. Okay, now press enter again. You can actually insert the date by using something on the insert tab. Press the insert tab. And you can actually go over into this text area and you can see a little calendar symbol with a little clock symbol. That's insert date and time. You click it, you get this wide array of different um, dates and dates and times and times. Okay, you can actually adjust this to like uh, do whatever you want in whatever style you want. Let's go ahead and say 10 slash 8 slash 20. We're going to do that one. The book also says to do October 8th, 2020. Choose whichever one you want. Now, a cool feature is this check mark right here says update automatically. If you leave that in place, anytime you open this document, it fixes it for you for today's date. Say okay, and there's your date. Now, notice it's got a little box with update. You can click it to update. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Good knowledge. We'll get to the other stuff uh, tomorrow, perhaps later. All right, see you later. You guys can go. I'll clean up. I want to go